In this video, I'm going to share with you how do you leverage banking instruments to access funds. My name is Tamar Zaman. You've got to watch this video. Hi, I'm Tamar Zaman from All Funds Global. My organization on this YouTube channel, the commodity that is banking products and services that banks primarily offer their Fortune 30 companies. We make it readily available to everybody in the world so that together we can create meaningful change. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe now. You will access customer case studies, customer walkthroughs, strategies, banking products and services. That are, you know, information that's redesigned to help elevate your financial knowledge, your financial wealth. Full disclosure: the purpose of this video is strictly for entertainment and education purposes. At no point are we soliciting anything. We're not your lawyers. We're not your accountants. We're not giving you legal advice, banking advice. This is strictly for entertainment and education purposes. One of the common questions I get from my clients is, Tamar, uh, we want to monetize or leverage a banking instrument and access cash on it. Can you share with us a little bit about how we do it? Help us out. I want to tackle this question in a very, very simple way. If I told you, can you access your house? and uh, you leverage as an asset and go to a bank and get a loan on it, most people understand that very easily. Yeah, I can, I can get my house, go to a bank, and access capital from it as a registered loan. Most people understand that. Now, if you switch the word house to the word land, like a house sits on a land, and say, can you go to a bank and provide them with a land and access a loan, most people understand that too really well. Now here's a question, can you swap the word land or house with the word banking instrument and, and then think about it. Can you leverage a banking instrument to access capital? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> so a little bit about the history of where these things started from, how it's evolved and how you can benefit from it. There's a lot of banking instruments out there, stand matters of credit, documents of credit, medium term notes, currency deposits, bonds, I can go on and on and on. For the simplicity, again, just for simplicity of this, I'm going to use bonds as an example. Later on, I'm going to show you how to swap the word bonds with other things. And I'm going to give you some languaging that's probably incorrect, but it makes the story flow so it's more, much more understandable so the common person can understand this. So the first indications of a bond defaulting was in the 12th century with a guy called uh, Riccardi Luca. Uh, he gave 400,000, uh, well, today it's called euros, by the time it was like European dollars, if I can say that way, to the England kings. And the England kings felt like they don't needed to pay, repay a debt, so they never paid it. And that was the first ever registered bond or left credit default thing that we know of. So when I talk about our YouTube channel, we talk about banking products and services, that being it's in existence for 60, 70 years. <laughs> when it comes to bonds, 12th century, man, 12th century, all day long. After World War I, uh, European governments were bankrupt. They didn't have the money. The central bank didn't have the money. They didn't have money in reserves. And they needed money to build infrastructure, houses, roads, hospitals, schools, like that. And so what the UK government did was they put up land as collateral. They issued 40-year bonds against it. And people, common people like you and me, went to the UK government and we purchased bonds at a coupon rate of whatever the coupon rate was. First of all, the seller is the government of UK. How likely is it for them to go bankrupt? And then there's collateral behind it, which is called land. And so you could, if you went and you played that game of buying a bond, subscribing to a bond for 40 years and getting a coupon rate on it every year, you could go back you know, as, as frequently as you want and purchase more and more bonds. And that became the marquee where governments around the world today, governments around the world, the Canadian government, the US government, the Argentinian government, pick a government around the world, are using bonds as a vehicle to raise money. That was the start of this. Now, years after that, farmers started to say, okay, I need money, I need to, uh, I don't know, I need to grow more sugar, or I need to grow uh, more crops, or I need more, uh, I don't know, cows or something like that. And the farmer would go to an exchange and say, can I get $80 because I need, I'm just using $80 as an example, by the way, can I get $80 because I need to do X, Y, and Z? 
and then the exchange or the banker, whatever word you want to think about it, said, okay, here's a note and I'm going to value this note for less than 100 bucks. I'm going to give it for 80 bucks. And now the farmer gets $80 cash. He goes and he makes, milks his cow, grows his sugar, whatever he needs to do. And then 90 days after he comes back with whatever it is he's doing. Now, if the value of the, I'm going to use an incorrect word. This is an incorrect word, but it simplifies a story. So the value of the bond, incorrect words I'm using is the bond. If the value of the bond went from $100 to $110, now the banker, if I can use, that's another incorrect word, the bank would uh, now keep the $20 profit. So the farmer comes today, I'm giving him $80 for a note that I'm creating at a value of 100. Then nine days after that, when the farmer comes in with his sugar, cow, whatever the deal is, now, now if the value of the bond is $120, I'm gonna profit 20 bucks and put it in my pocket. But if the value of the note, the value of the bond is now $90, it didn't hit 100, the farmer has to now pay me the delta on what I am out. So, so that's a little bit of a evolution of bonds. Later on, corporations and governments, specifically banks, start to leverage bonds as a vehicle to make money. So there's there's, there's different types of bonds. There's junk bonds, there's this, like there's a lot of different form of bonds. One form of bond you might be interested in looking up is something called swap bonds. Swap bonds are primarily used for tax purposes. However, they're also used for money-making purposes. And so if I'm a corporation or from a bank, and the government of Argentina, as an example, is paying higher interest rate compared to the government of Brazil, I will have the option of swapping bonds and taking advantage of the higher interest rate country that's giving me money. Now, let me tell you, I am in the world of financial uh, instruments, and that's what all funds, all funds global. We, we do a lot of work in this area. And if you, uh, if you feel that your bank, any of the f Fortune you know, 50 banks in the world, if you think that they're, make, they're making money on retail banking like loans, consumer loans, I promise you, you are mistaken. Banks make a fortune, a fortune on something called banking instruments. Overnight of uh, the swap bonds, just overnight lending of the swap bonds, there's so many ways to make so much money in financial instruments and how to leverage them to access capital. That's not even funny. Now, the question for the everyday entrepreneur becomes, so Tim, with this great theory or story, uh, fact check with some of the things you're saying, so it makes sense, but what does that mean to me, the everyday business owner, and how do I leverage it? So if you have an asset, so remember I said you have a house, you can go get money against a house. So I'm now switching the word house with the word asset. So if you have an asset that's generally growing in value, you can issue a bond against the asset and get a loan on it, get a line of credit on it. Um, if it's a standard matter of credit, you can put it into things like private tracing programs, and now you get a non-recourse loan on it, which is a loan you never have to pay back, and it's really awesome. If you don't have an asset, you don't have land, you don't have a house, you don't have a gold mine, you don't have 10,000 cows, cows is by the way wrong, wrong, but you need access to capital, you can go to the market and look for people that are selling financial instruments or leasing out financial instruments and get them at a discounted price. And then you're looking for a different market to sell it to, but what's called a monetizer is going to pay you a higher price so for you to keep a margin on it. Now, if you want to play that game, which is a game my organization plays, I do this for myself personally. My senior associates have now started to do this with me. We're doing it with some of our high net worth clients who are friends and family members. What I would tell you is you're looking for a financial instrument. And these things are documented. This is not a financial instrument that you go on eBay and buy for $800. So don't like, <laughs> so register document. There should be a dollar value attached to it. There should be no spelling errors. It shouldn't have banking codes of the 12th century. <laughs> There should be a valuation on the instrument like that. You have to get a, a valid financial instrument that's real, like a standard of credit, document of credit, bank guarantee, medium term note, I can, a bond. You can then leverage it to go get a loan 
or put in a private program or sell it buy and sell uh, we do a lot of buy and sell what i love about private banking is that just on the bond itself forget financial instruments just bonds itself there's so many variations of bonds there's insurance bonds uh bank guarantees stripes hybrid bonds junk bonds harmless warrants rights i can go on and on and on on different types of banking instruments and bonds that are out there there's so many ways of structuring it and there are companies that are making billions of dollars they're in the financial consulting business and all they do is they really understand this marketplace really well and they take the creative bond if i can say that way they structure it so that there's an asset behind it and then look at how do you leverage it to create wealth or to access capital that's a little bit about the history of banking instruments. Uh, you have different forms of banking instruments. The most popular ones are medium-term notes, uh, followed by stand matters or credit, followed by bank guarantees, bonds, currency deposits. I can go on and on and on. And this is just a fascinating industry for sure. If you're a business owner who's successful and you love to learn, and you get that the more you know about money, the more you can create intergenerational wealth, I really recommend learning more about financial instruments, not about banking, not about central banks, not about politics of governments. I mean, these things are all important, but specifically about financial instruments and how they work. A starting point, if you were interested in it, it would be the Society for Worldwide uh, Interbank Financial Telecommunication. It's called SWIFT. It's a 200-page document. Read it, reread it. Reread it again, hire a law firm or a lawyer to teach you the 200 page document and answer any questions you may have. Uh, that's a great starting point. If you're committed, if you have capital and you're committed to getting started in this area and you're looking for a trusted uh, partner, uh, feel free to reach out to us at All Funds Global. You're hiring us uh, through a consultation call. Uh, as of today on Trustpilot, we score 4.8 out of 5. That's what our customers are rating us at. And I think we have some really fascinating domain expertise and banking relationships that are just uncommon. Uh, my name is Tamer Zaman from Alphonse Global, and thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel.